Hello friends, welcome back to the SNW audio channel. In this video, we continue to look at the two-stage voltage feedback amplifier, where I will showcase my LT SPICE model and explain how to use it. In today's video, we will be covering the following subjects. Modeling in LT SPICE, why it is a good idea and what do you need for it? Modeling the two-stage amplifier, and then we'll wrap up with an LTSPICE demo. Modeling the amplifier before you plunge into a transistor level design offers three main benefits. First, it shows you how the ideal amplifier should behave. For example, if the ideal amp does not meet specs, the real one will for sure will not. Second, it allows for the interchange of subblocks with non-ideal blocks for testing. This way, you can assess the performance of the block by itself, and you can pinpoint where a problem may be coming from. Third, it is a test bench for new ideas, where you can test them quickly without second order effects. In other words, you can test your ideas in the best case scenario. Now, to do the model and capitalize its benefits, there are two best practices that you need to follow. First, you need to make the model modular. In other words, it needs to have the ability to have its components interchanged easily. Second, except for the block being modeled, you need to use ideal components in order to not introduce unexpected errors. To model the amplifier, it is good practice to create a library of ideal blocks to keep the schematic of the model clean. These blocks include the GM cell, the voltage buffer, and the voltage buffer with common terminal. The GM cell, which is essentially a voltage control current source, models the transconductance of a gain stage. This block takes a GM value as a parameter. The voltage buffer, which is a voltage control voltage source with a gain of one, is used to model the ideal output stage and other buffers in the circuit. The voltage buffer with common terminal is an extension of the voltage buffer, where an extra terminal captures the output current in the buffer as shown here. This block is used to model cascodes and current conveyors. The implementation is shown here. In this implementation, B1 is a current control current source that mimics the output current of voltage control voltage source E1. Other good to have components for modeling include the differential voltage gain block, the current mirror, and a simple op-amp. The differential voltage gain block, which is essentially a voltage control voltage source, implements differential voltage probes and models voltage gain. This block takes value AV as a parameter. The ideal current mirror, as you may guess, it's used to model current mirrors. The implementation uses a current control current source with AI as a parameter. Finally, there may be occasions where you need to implement a circuit that involves an op-amp. So having a simple op-amp model is handy. The one I use shown here models open loop gain and bandwidth. In addition to all these blocks that I've shown, you also have the entire LT SPICE component library at your disposal to do modeling. Now let's turn our attention to the two-stage amplifier. First off, the model is encapsulated in a symbol. I am a big fan of hierarchical design, so all my models have a dedicated one. Looking at the schematic, a GM cell X1 models the input stage while resistor R01 models the parallel combination of the input stage DC output impedance with the second stage DC input impedance. The second stage is also modeled with a GM cell X2 and resistor R02 which is the parallel combination of the second stage DC output impedance and the output stage DC input impedance. Voltage VREF sets the DC voltage at the input of the second stage. This is useful to have when swapping out the input stage for a real circuit that needs the DC level at node high C1 not to be zero. The output stage is modeled with a voltage buffer and output resistor R1. Note that at this point the model does not include capacitances at node high C1 and high C2. We will be adding those later. Finally, before going to LT SPICE, notice the parallelism between the block diagram and the model schematic. All the components in the schematic correspond to a block in the diagram. In my mind, the block diagram is for us to understand the behavior of the circuit, while the model serves as a platform to verify our understanding. Okay, so now we're in a LT SPICE environment. And I've loaded my AMP test bench, which I use mostly for the design purposes. And here I've placed as the dot 
the model amplifier that we just talked about in the previous slides. So let me just double click it. And you can see it's, uh, for the most part, it's the same schematic that we looked at a minute ago. Made a couple modifications. I've added a loop game proof so we can do some uh, demonstrations on how this uh, model works. And I've also added a resistor between the supplies, which really doesn't do anything other than prevent LT spies from giving an error saying that BTC and BE are not being used. The boxes, as I mentioned before, are the GM cells and the voltage buffer that we I showcased in the slides. Uh, the GM you can see is the voltage control current source and the output buffer is the voltage control voltage source with a gain of, of one. Okay, so now that we've gone through the model, the first thing I want to do is just show functionality by running a quick loop gain test using the loop gain probe. So let me just close this. And to do the test, I've actually changed a little bit on how I'm doing a loop gain. I've migrated to the dual probe method, which I'll be covering on my next video, which I think is, is pretty cool. But for now, just don't worry about it too much. It's, it works exactly the same as a single probe, given that we have only have one probe inside the model. So it's all set up, so I'm just going to go hit run. And if we go here, now I can just plot the, the loop gain. And you can see it, it, it does exactly what we expect. If we go in the model, we know it's a 10 milli semen uh, input GM against 70 puff. And that works out to about 560 kilohertz when you factor in the gain of the gain network. And that's about exactly what we get. But now the, where the power of this, of having a model is, is let's say that now we want to see the effect of having say two GMs, you know, what, how the loop gain looks for uh, two separate values of input GM. So we can go here to the model and rather than have for the input GM minus 10 milli Siemens, let's make it into a variable. So I can go like that and just call it GM. Okay. Save it. So now, I can step that and I have already a step command here. I have it ready. So I just go ahead and uncomment it out. And now let me just run it. And we can see if I type the right one, I have a, I've made a plot definition so I can plot two of them at the same time. So LGSA is first run, LGSA underscore two is the second run. And we can see that given that the crossover is related to GM on C and we've changed GM by a factor of 10, now the crossover frequency has gone down by a factor of 10. Okay, so that's one benefit of having the model that is parameterized. Uh, another thing that I want to show is the, which I think is the most important part, is the swapping of components. So let me put this back to, or to what it was before. 10 millisiemens, uh, save, close. And what I want to do now is run a distortion simulation. So I've made the changes in order to run a distortion simulation now. I've changed the input coupler and I changed the simulation command. So let's, let's go ahead and run it. And the expectation now should be that the amplifier should give you no distortion using ideal components. So there should be no distortion to speak of. And let's look at that using the dot four command. And we can see right there, total harmonic distortion is 0.00%. And by the way, another thing that I, I always been curious about is what exactly is this number? I looked it on LT Spice groups and they keep saying that it's the sum of all harmonics, but this amplifier is ideal. There's no harmonics. So I don't know if anybody knows what exactly this number means, I'll be very interested to know. But again, uh, the, the one that's important here is we got an ideal amplifier, we got no harmonics, right? Perfect distortion. All right, so now let's go ahead and say we want to test our input stage. And to do that, well, I'm gonna go here into the model and I'm going to swap out our input GM box with a transistorized box. So I have one that I've been working on. So let me just go grab it. It's right here. And this needs supplies, BCC, BE, 
okay? And because I don't want you guys to think I'm cheating, let me just show you the box. Uh, this is the GM stage I've been working on. It's a little bit complicated. It's a PMP input stage. Uh, don't worry about it too much. Uh, we'll, I'll walk my way into this input stage on how I got here, but just wanted to show that it's real transistors. So having said that, let's go ahead and run this. Actually, before we run this, I just noticed a mistake. This reference node doesn't need to be referenced to ground, it needs to be referenced to the lower supply, right? You think about it, this is 1.5 volts above supply. And if I go to my, my box, which is this output here, in order to not saturate this transistor, this node needs to be about one and a half volts from the negative supply, not ground. So, okay, we just averted a mistake there. And uh, probably some of you already noticed it before I did. But now, now things are good, let's just run. So this simulation is gonna take a little bit of time because now we're not using ideal components. So I'm just gonna pause the video and fast forward to the end. Okay, simulation's done. So now let's look at the output, just to make sure that we got something that makes sense. Okay, full power output. And if we hit the error log to see the dot four results, we can see that, yeah, now because we have transistors, we've got some distortion. In this case, it's actually really low. It's zero point, bunch of zeros, one, two, mostly because the that input stage has a lot of corrections in order to get low distortion. But Again, it's not zero, it's, uh, it's not ideal. The key message though, is that let's say I now build the entire amplifier using this input stage. If I get say 0.1% distortion on that amplifier, I know it's not because of the input stage because when I tested the input stage alone, I got a much smaller distortion amount. So that's one of the power of having these model amplifiers is that you can actually test each block independently and pinpoint where the problem might be. Another thing that you can do, and nobody said that you have to have a single model amplifier. Uh, you can actually build a bunch of them in, to test different things. So let's say we want to test different compensation schemes. So I have this one that I made before. And in this one, what I'm doing is I'm going to test uh, tuple compensation. So if you don't know what tuple compensation is right now, it doesn't matter. I will talk about it more later. And you can see here that I have a two-pole compensation network. And then all the other stuff is about the same. Uh, I have my transistorized input stage that I showed. The second stage is still a box. And the output stage is still a box. Like that. Okay. So let me just go ahead and run this uh, to see how the distortion looks with two-pole compensation. For those who know tuple compensation, you already will know that it actually is going to perform a lot better. And just like before, I'm going to fast forward the video because this just takes a long time. It's boring. Okay, the simulation's done. So now we can look at the results that come out in the error log. And you can see now that the distortion of that same input stage with a tuple compensation is now pretty much nothing. It's pretty much zero. And this is a full power 20 kilohertz. So the, what this tells me is that when I build the amplifier, any distortion that I see is actually not coming from the input stage anymore. It's coming from other stuff. And that's actually very good to know because it points you in the direction where you have to look. Uh, in this case, it's saying, don't look in the input stage. The problem's not there. And I think that's all I wanted to say regarding uh, the models. And I'm going to be using this model a lot in the, when we do the design, because what I'll be doing is I'll be uh, testing the section that we're working on with all the other areas uh, ideal in order to just work on the distortion components of that section, regardless of what it is on the other ones. And then we'll start combining to see the interaction because uh, some there will be distortion components that have to do with the interaction between two blocks, two non-ideal blocks. And those are actually pretty interesting too. Following my initial agenda, in the next video, I will be doing an introduction to distortion and covering the distortion mechanisms in audio amplifiers and how to measure them in LT Spice. But prior to that, I'm going to do a follow-up to the video 
how to measure loop gain using LTSpice because I want to showcase the dual proof method. Finally, I have postponed the discussion regarding the design of the gain network until we start our discussion of the input stage. If you like the content of this video and want to get notified when the next video is available, please show your support to this channel by subscribing and hitting the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching, until next time, goodbye.